In today's video, we're looking at condensation polymers, and in particular at a type called polyesters, which are made using these ester links. To make things easier, we're going to run through an example first to give you an idea of how it works, and then we'll explain exactly what's going on afterwards. Like all polymers, condensation polymers are made up of lots of individual monomers. With polyesters, though, a common combination is to use two different monomers. A dicarboxylic acid monomer, which contains two carboxylic acid groups, and a diol monomer, which contains two alcohol groups. And as a quick aside, if you haven't seen these coloured rectangles within molecules before, they just represent the rest of the molecule and we tend to use them in general examples like here, where we don't want to make things complicated by showing the specific molecules. In order for the two monomers to combine, the dicarboxylic acid has to give up its OH group, and the diol gives up a hydrogen atom from its OH group. And when these three atoms combine, they form a water molecule. This leaves this carbon from the dicarboxylic acid to bond directly to this oxygen from the diol. And it's this bond that we call the ester link. At the moment, this is technically just a dimer, because it's only two monomers combined. To show it as a repeating unit, though, we need to remove this OH and H from the ends and then point the empty bonds out to the sides, so that they can bond on to other repeating units. And importantly, because we removed an OH and hydrogen again, it will form another water molecule. Then to finish, we add these big brackets to either end that cut through the bonds. If we now put all of this together, we effectively had a dicarboxylic acid monomer plus a diol monomer go to form a condensation polymer, which in this case was a polyester, because this group in the middle is an ester link. And we also formed two molecules of water. In real life, this process often happens with hundreds or thousands of monomers. And so instead of writing the exact number of molecules we have in front of each molecule, we instead use the letter N to represent how many there are. And we put the N in front of each of our reactants, and in the bottom right corner of our repeat unit. And we need to put a 2N in front of our H2O, because we form two water molecules per repeat unit. This is actually why we call these polymers condensation polymers, because the process forms water molecules, like when gaseous water condenses. In order for molecules to be able to combine in condensation polymers, there's a few important things that they need to have. One is that each of the monomers has to have at least two functional groups. For example, our dicarboxylic acid has two carboxyl groups, and our diol has two alcohol groups. Second, there needs to be at least two different functional groups overall. So here we have the carboxyl and the alcohol group. And finally, a small molecule is given off in the process, which is generally water. To show you a real example, ethandioric acid can combine with ethandiol to form polyethylethanoate and water. The very last thing we need to say is that polyesters are generally biodegradable, which means they can break down naturally, because bacteria and other microorganisms can break down the ester links. Importantly, this is a big difference to addition polymers, like plastics, which generally aren't biodegradable, and so stay in the environment for ages.
anyway, that's everything for this video. So hope you found that useful. If you did, then please do give us a like and subscribe. And we'll see you again soon.